Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 16 of Multi-Block Madness where today I would like to get into Applied Energistics. So at the very end of last episode we went looting in the nether for these advanced machine frames. They come out of the nether fortress um, chests most, most of the time anyways. There's some other sources but uh, I just ended up looting them out of there because they're much easier to loot than they are to craft. Anyways, now that we have those, I think we're just about ready to start our the process of making ME controllers. The stuff in here is pretty easy to make. Um, right, this is just, it'll be a couple, oh, this has to be hardened glass. Can we make normal hardened glass here? Or do we have to use fused quartz? Uh, let's see if we can. This, this hardened glass requires that. But I think there's thermal hardened glass. So no, we cannot make this at least that easily. Okay. Um, well, anyways, let's uh, start up a whole bunch of fused quartz then. I wonder, is there a easy way to make fused quartz? We can make that. Oh, good. I know I have a lot of quartz. And then we can... Let's make two stacks of it. Ah, oh, no, I lost my electro that rendering. Um... There we go. So the arc furnace, not very slow, or not very fast, but it does 12 things up in parallel, and apparently we need more power. Well, uh, we'll let it run however fast it runs. In the meantime, we have to make a whole bunch of fluids. So this is just throwing charged surface quartz, regular quartz and redstone into water. There's no easier way, right? There is a fluid seed. Let's go check. Did I, do I happen to have a fluid seed? Now that I've updated the pack, the uh the seed greenhouses whatever no longer generate so i'm kind of at the point where the seeds i have are the ones i you know can use i can't craft anymore and no more generate and hey, we have fluid seeds though um so let me plant these and then instead of making fluids we'll just grow it in fact let's take a quick detour and make a proper farm right now i'm still harvesting everything here by hand we're gonna need a lot of resources soon so let's make a farm that will harvest things automatically my goal with this farm is to build something that is easily scalable so we can make it larger or faster by adding more sprinklers or physically making it larger. Um, can handle multiple different plant types. This can handle effectively one plant type per block of the farm and is very fast. So the idea is if I just plant the seeds here, their growth gets boosted by all the sprinklers. And because of how many sprinklers and other effects there are, every plant in this field will be growing very quickly. So to harvest them fast enough, my plan is to just use Drum of the Wilds. So uh, they make a, like a drumming sound, but I have that muted. Each time they're hit with a mana burst, they harvest all nearby crops. Um, in the case of agricraft plants, they just uh, cause the essence to drop. If they, In the case of actual plants, it it's as if you broke the plant. So this works very well with the agricraft plants because all you have to do is then pick up the drops that come off. So for that last step, I have hidden underneath here a drawer system. Uh, there's a item collector here to pick things up. I think there's a faster item collector called the Pearl Ender, oh, Ender Hopper. No, I guess it's not in the pack. Never mind. Um, we'll have to make do with the uh, advanced things item collector then. The main source of lag created by this farm when it's running at full blast is the little bit of time that item entities spend on the ground. But turn this on and uh, yeah, the products get automatically harvested. I have a demagnetizer to turn my magnet off, but there's a bit of a client desync with it. So it looks like the items fly towards me briefly, but they don't actually. Anyways, um... The drums of the wild normally consume mana, but if you give them a turn this off, I can show you the lens real quick. A phantom lens, the mana burst goes through it without being consumed. And then if you give it a messenger lens, that just reduces the amount of mana per burst and speeds it up. So by writing the two of those in conjunction, um, you get a lot of mana burst, a lot of mana bursts harvesting each plant here. Uh, anyways, the reason I have them laid out in this grid, like the crop six laid out in a grid, it's that it's because if I had an extra, I guess if I get close enough, I still grab some of it, but, um, we'll get some extra crop sticks here. And if I were to place a crop stick here, eventually one of these plants would spread into it because of, you know, single, uh, 
plants and spread into nearby single crop sticks. They don't spend much time at full growth, but eventually they'll get spread into. So the convenient thing is while you're filling out the grid to leave gaps in between. Now, if I were to plant something, you know, like I guess in this one, if I were to plant something in this one, that's okay because it has nowhere to spread. But anyways, um, that does mean that I can pack items a bit more densely than I am now. So I'm going to go and take these seeds here oh i also built the farm a little bit away so that it's uh right on the edge of render distance i don't think it'll cause visual lag that way but if i need to i can turn down um our render distance a little bit as well but anyways i'm gonna basically plant one of each plant and the idea is that one of each plant should be to produce enough essences to meet our demands now super late game it's entirely conceivable that we'll need more than one of certain ones like for singularities and stuff but for the time being one of each is plenty because each harvest produces produces like three to ten ish essence right it takes eight essence to craft a thing so each harvest basically produces on average like one bat one craft worth of each of these uh essences which means that you know every five seconds we get like in the case of dark steel probably like three ingots of it that's crazy fast all things considered They've moved all the leveled up seeds over. So I think all the seeds in here are 10, 10, 10. Uh, there might be a few that are very like dirt seeds. This one might not be, but I don't really care if my dirt seed isn't 10, 10, 10. Some of the ones that um, yeah, are a very low, uh, that don't need, that we don't need a lot of, might not be 10, 10, 10. And that's all right. But um, all the important seeds are. Now, if you're going to build a farm in this tile, that you know, spews item entities everywhere. You need to be 100% sure that every item entity you create also gets picked up. So that's why every drawer down here, oopsies, is voided. Doesn't matter um, how full they get, it's much, much better to void the essence than to uh, leave it on the ground. Because if you leave it on the ground, you're going to crash your game, guaranteed. All right, so anyways, now that I have these essences, most of them have one use. Like gold essence, you do literally one thing, like, right, you turn into gold ingots. Some of them have multiple uses, like ice here, can make snow, ice, packed ice, uh, I guess just those. For those, I'll probably leave in essence form. But for the ones that are single use, there's really no reason not to, that's a bad example, um, not to craft them into their ingot form. First of all, it typically takes up less slots, like eight items makes five. And second of all, the ingot is usually compactable. So the mana steel ingot can be made into a block of mana steel, which uh, can be stored in a compacting drawer. So to facilitate that, let's set up a system of crafters. I probably want one crafter per... How do I... What crafters are available, actually? There's the RF Tools crafter. This is perhaps the most powerful one. It can do eight recipes per block and is exceptionally fast, but then you have to make sure you don't jam it. Um, really nothing... Arcane Pattern, no, that's probably not worth the trouble. Yeah, looking at our options, I think the RF Tools Crafter is the optimal choice for this task. Um, each crafter can handle eight recipes, so we only need, uh, what do we have, like nine to a row? One, two, three, four, about four of those to handle all of this. So let me make a few of those. Um, I'll probably make some power cells to wirelessly transfer energy out to here as well, and then we can set that up. You know I've said it before, but I'll keep saying it. The ability to use these capsules to do the miniaturization crafting of frames is a huge boon. I've made 12 machine frames now and it's only taken, you know, however long it takes to miniaturize as opposed to having to build out the structure each time. Oh, it's so, so pleasant. Anyways, um, 14. I'll probably stop at 16. That's probably a fair number of our close machine frames. They're good for the crafters, for the power cells. So there are our tools uh, frames are quite versatile. I think we'll go through a good number of these. One small detour before we can make the power cells. That is specter lenses. So this needs specter ingots, which we can make. However, we need ectoplasm. To do this, we have to kill a uh, mob with magic. One of the um, ghosts that come, sometimes spawn when you kill a mob so let's go get ourselves some magic a couple options here we can use uh bombcraft has some things but i think i'm just gonna make splash harming potions and we may as well level up our data model as we do this so what we're looking for is a little ghost that has a small chance to spawn each time you kill a mob at least i think 
I think any mob kill has a chance to spawn. Well, let's uh, kill these for a little while until we get one. I know when I'm not looking for these ghosts, like I get them every kill it seems. But when I'm look when I am looking for them, I'm sure they'll be impossible to find. Here's one. I couldn't get them to spawn off the. Uh... Uh, yeah, but I couldn't get it to spawn off the wither skeletons, so oh, I didn't drop the thing. Dang it! Um, so I came to the end to get, try to get to spawn off Endermen. I guess they just don't spawn off wither skeletons or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, I thought they had a hundred percent drop chance for their ectoplasm, but apparently not. So here we are at it again. Let's try that again. Flash harming. That definitely killed it. And where's my ectoplasm? That's it. that's what it says how to get it, right? When a spirit kill that spirit using magic, for example, potions yield one to two. It doesn't say chance to yield one or two. Ah, like just hiding in here, right? Where's my ectoplasm? I my guess is what's happening is that um I, I noticed that the like, like that lightning strike effect that happens after I kill a mob, it can kill the spirits. And if that's what kills the spirits, they uh don't seem to drop anything. So let me see if I can get another one to spawn. The spawn rate's not terribly high, but I mean, I can just keep zapping until one does. But, uh, nope, that was a different mob dying. There's a, they have a different death sound, so you can easily tell when you killed one, but they can be kind of hard to, like, spawn in. Come on. Give me one. Anyways, uh, if it is the perk, you can get rid of it temporarily by using a sealing sigil on the perk. So... The perk is now sealed, which means it doesn't do anything. I think the perks past it still activate, but since these say chain an additional X times, if the chaining is disabled altogether, I don't think it will cause chaining. Let's um give it a shot, I guess. Back to the end. We can also replace our teleporters with RF tools teleporters, if we like. Those will uh don't take they just don't take the level to go places. But anyways. Yeah, no more chain lightning. All right. So now I just have to get one more. I should maybe make them extra potions just in case. But let's get one more of these things to spawn. I like how the gun is as good a melee weapon as it is uh, a gun. And in fact, with how much reach I have, like I could actually punch things almost as far as I can shoot them. I think he's too far to shoot. He's probably too far to punch as well. Okay, so my shot range is longer than my punch range, but not by much. Come on, give me your ectoplasm. There we go, that did it. So we got two pieces of ectoplasm off that. That's not much, but with each of these ectoplasms, we can, well, with even just one of them, we can turn it into a tree. So combine that with a sapling. Nope, I think we have to use it on a sapling. And then we can grow the... Uh, there we go. That gives us a spirit or specter sapling. And then we can use this in a bonsai pot to grow um, more ectoplasm. And after just a couple of minutes, we have plenty of ectoplasm. So one sapling is easily enough uh, over the long term to meet our ectoplasm demands. Anyways, take this, alloy it with this stuff. Go in that slot, you go in this slot. Do your thing. And this should make me uh, the vector ingot, I believe. That's what we were doing. And then once I have some of this, we can make the specter lens. And some of this other stuff is nice. I mean, I guess we could just transfer power of the specter coil directly. But, um, yeah, I've already gone this far. Let's just make the power cells. It's nice that these craft two at a time, too, because you tend to use a lot of them. Anyways, they can be upgraded to the advanced variant. The dimensional shard just comes from the ore in the end. Um, not super important to upgrade it, but I... Let's upgrade our first two anyways. Alright, so the advanced variant just transfers more energy. Anyways, we can plug this in anywhere on our power line. So how about right here? And give it a link card. Uh, there we go. So that's, wait, unlinked, no, here. Link ID 2, okay, then there we go. Um, any power cell that has link, that has the same link ID is effectively part of the same virtual multi-block. So they, it's one way to wirelessly transfer energy. 
each cell adds, I think, 4 million, or each advanced cell adds 4 million, each basic cell adds 1 million to the energy storage of the power cell. So anyways, I can now take... Well, let me fly. Where did my flight go? There we go. Um, take the other power cell and set it up over back here. Uh, put you right here. Set you to output like this, and now we have wireless energy. So with that, we can then set up crafters, and I think the way I want to do it is... Let's get some energy cables first. What energy cottage do I have? Just basic? Yeah, basic's sufficient. So each row here has nine uh, different drawers or nine unique resources in it. However, almost every row, well, I can intentionally set it up such that every row has at least one essence or plant that we won't auto craft with. So that way, um, each crafter that has eight slots can handle the items we give it. So, anyways, we will pipe the items in and then each of these will just get a, assigned a slot. Uh, all external I set you to fast mode. And then we just, you know, each essence, it's one of these, all external apply. And then we just have to extract from these crafters and store them back into another set of drawers. Um, I think if I do something like this, well, I'm going to lay out all the wiring later, but we can go extract on the red channel and maybe just, I, can, I guess we could store everything back into the original set of drawers. Yeah, let's do that. So... like so insert red and then i can just add more drawers to hold the now to hold the ingots not the essence here's a new issue i can't store gold nuggets into compacting drawers for i have no clue what this means compacting drawer 3381 what is 3381 Is that the compacting drawer ID? But anyways, um, I want to store now. I want to store gold in uh, a compacting drawer that has ingots, blocks, and nuggets, right? But if I put the ingots in, I get a, I get ingot block, compressed block, but it won't let me store the nugget. I don't actually know what the error is trying to tell me. I think it's trying to actually compress the gold in the wrong way. Is there a two by two gold compacting recipe that can undo? Um, not that I see. Weird. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to store it as blocks and then craft them into nuggets as uh, on demand. Bit of a shame. Use a lot of gold nuggets. I suppose the upside is that uh, when you have when you're having something that you store in double compressed form, you get to store nine times as much of it before the drawers start voiding. Oh boy, that took a while to wire it all up, but it's all done now. So all of our resources are being produced automatically, sorted to the drawers here, and they get produced extremely quickly, as I was saying. So um, look at that, 6,000 obsidian, uh, 1,500 void metal, and this is like five minutes worth of production we're looking at. So, um, yeah, now anything that we have a seed of, which, to be fair, is not every resource. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of resources we don't have seeds of. But for everything that we do have a seed of, we have tons and tons of ingots of it here. I do need some way to hook it up to my storage network, but I don't think simple storage has, like, a wireless connector, does it? If not, we're going to have to either run a cable all the way out to here. Um, I don't know if I will pull back. But nope. Uh, so because yeah, I don't think there is a wireless connector, um, I think what we'll do is until we have applied our logistics, if I need something, I'll just literally file out here and be like, all right, I need some iron. So let me just do this and grab, you know, 20 stacks of iron, dump it in and do that. When we get applied our logistics, we will either run a cable out to here or use one of its wireless properties to connect to it. Back to the ME controller, we have to process a lot of this vibrant quartz glass. So I made the uh, hardened glass or the fused quartz in the arc furnace, but now there's a lot more stuff to do in the arc furnace. And I think I want to be able to run an arc furnace at these 1024 RF per tick recipes at full blast. So that means we have to produce at least 12 times this or, you know, 12,000, almost 13,000 RF a tick. Right now we're doing about half that. So 
as a result, depending on what we're processing, sometimes our arc furnace is a little short on energy. Anyways, I'm making up a uh, processing some cobalt and ardite because with the two of these, we can now make manulin in our blast furnace, which takes a while. Uh, I can't really time to bottle it too much either because that does use up our energy. But um, every, I think it's 11 ingots of manulin lets us make one of these uh, turbine blades. And then once we have the manual turbines, we can upgrade our current steel turbines to manual. I wonder, what is the next tier above manual anyway? Uh, so manual is 800. Super, we probably can't do that. HSLA is 1,000. Extreme. Can we do extreme? What is extreme alloy? No, we need at least an alloy furnace. But we can make the nuclear craft machine chassis, right? Yeah, I think we can actually make a nuclear craft alloy furnace. Is that true? Let's try it. Looks true to me. So one alloy furnace coming right up. We'll go right here. This thing absolutely hugs energy. So at 1x speed, it's 1000 R if I tick. And it's not exactly fast at 1x speed. Um, 90 seconds to make blocks. So it uses a lot more power than default and it's no faster uh which is kind of a disappointment but i mean there's some things that we can't make elsewhere and it has an internal buffer of 14 million and i believe that scales with number of oh no it doesn't scale with number of energy upgrades so um i guess the energy upgrades if i don't put the speed upgrade in, okay yeah energy upgrades don't do anything unless you have at least as many speed upgrades in there but uh it does make it faster at it at the cost of using more power but um I guess the reason it needs a huge energy buffer is that you can have up to 64 speed upgrades and 64 energy upgrades, at which point it uses 65,000 RF attack. If you don't have the energy upgrades at all, it probably uses like all 14 million RF attack to run. So energy upgrades very important. Anyways, turbine. What exactly was I making here? Extreme alloy. So that's tough alloy, hard carbon. Yeah, that's graphite and diamond. They're going down a bit of a rabbit hole here. Hard carbon is actually quite easy. It's just graphite and diamond, and graphite is effectively one piece of coal per. So one coal or two coal and a diamond makes two hard carbon. Uh, sign me up. The one that's a bit more expensive and worse, a lot slower to make is the tough alloy. But material-wise, I've got tons of it. The feral boron, uh, you can clone feral boron with adaptive ingots, which is what I'm doing. Um, does take a healthy chunk of energy. I guess there's even a higher tier one, a 2,000 RF to take recipe. Geez. So actually, I need 2,000 times 12. Uh, so like 20, almost 25,000 RF to take to run 12 instances of this. I should keep that in mind. But anyways, this just turns each adaptive ingot into two feral borons. Um, and then we just have to run that with lithium. These ores all come from the deep dark mining there. So um, I have like a limited amount of lithium ore. In fact, I think I had just over a stack. And most of it is being processed right now. Maybe as a temporary stopgap because I'm sitting on, you know, 2,000 ingots of steel. We can make some uh, steel turbines to provide power, at least briefly, and if I care, which I probably don't anymore, we can recover 100% of the steel we put into this by just recycling the uh, turbine blades that come out. With, I think I added 16 more steel turbines, we're up to 16,000 RF a day, which should mean that we can almost run you full blast. Um, did I happen to, as long as we're not running the uh, 2,000 RF a tick recipe, we can run it. But anyways, Let's start the process of making extreme alloy. And once we upgrade, you know what? We don't even have to upgrade these turbines, right? There's, we could just add additional uh, H HSLA or extreme alloy, whatever turbines, because until we reach the max count, which is 50, I believe, um, there's no harm in just adding more. Yeah, and then that'll increase our energy. The uh, There's an inertia value on these turbines. I don't actually know what the, that means. It definitely it's not efficiency at first i thought it was efficiency but they all the turbines have the same efficiency just have different inertia so i, I don't i don't know what exactly inertia is but uh yeah i'm not gonna stress it too much of course having our generator produce more power without giving it more fuel doesn't actually help 
we've reached a point where uh, we don't produce enough fuel to run our generator at full blast. Apparently, we actually haven't produced enough fuel to run our generator at full blast. It's about 4,000 RF a tick is the average sustainable output. We can briefly go above that if we have a fuel buffer. And the bottleneck appears to be our squeezer here. It just it doesn't squeeze uh, seed oil fast enough to go into our refinery. But we do have all the outputs of our distillation tower that we're still not using. The lubricant, I don't think we can do anything with. It has some other fringe uses, but with the exception of lubricant, the diesel and gasoline are both useful and can be burned. So why don't we set up a thing that will pipe the diesel and gasoline, probably via under tank, over to here. This tank can only hold one fuel type at a time, but we'll just, you know, fill it with whatever and then let it burn. Later, I can set up a system that'll selectively burn, well, that'll prioritize burning, uh, biodiesel, then diesel, then gasoline. Although looking at the amount of energy we get, diesel is actually quite energy dense. So we get, you know, over a thousand or about a thousand RF per tick per millibucket. Uh, the gasoline that's come out of here burned up almost instantly. Um, it'll automatically switch to like from one to the other when the tank empties out. So let me see if I can catch the brief window when it runs on gasoline here. All right, when this diesel runs out, it'll switch over to gasoline very briefly. So if we look here, right, to make 16,000 RF per tick with diesel, it's using 17 millibuckets a tick. And with gasoline, I saw that it was about 170, so about one-tenth. Let's see what it actually is. I only saw it for a moment. Oh, hold on, it switched to biodiesel. So biodiesel is actually more energy dense than regular diesel. All right, but gasoline is next, I believe. And here we go. So yeah, 234 millibuckets per tick to produce this much. And by pipe only moves 200 millibuckets of fuel per tick. So gasoline, extremely inefficient. Um, I don't know why either. I guess it's just uh, the way uh, advanced generators is configured. According to thermal, uh, well, if we were to burn it in a compression dynamo, which I mean, no reason we can't, I suppose. Gasoline is 1.2 million millibuckets or 1.2 million RF per bucket, which is about what we're getting out of bio or out of the biodiesel and regular diesel diesel is 800. So it's supposedly gasoline is one and a half times as good as diesel, at least if we use a compression dynamo as a baseline. But I don't know. Different generators, different rules, I guess. Um, I'm not too worried about min-maxing because I think between all of our generators together, what's it, Eclipse Day? It is. Uh, with, between all of our generators, or all of our fuel sources, whatever, together, we do make enough fuel to run it all. So, meh. Anyways, um, this is now, nope, still making its thing, still needs more power. All right, always needs more power. For now, let's just make our five turbines, add another 10,000 uh, RF a tick production to it. Bam. And there we go. So up to 26,000 RF a tick. Excellent. All that extra energy really did speed up the process of gathering the both the platinum and the vibrant quartz. However, there's one thing left to do before we can make the ME control, and that's make the thing we have to throw into the miniaturization field. So Lewix processing units, the ingots themselves, this isn't bad, um, but we do need to set up some inscribers. So, first of all, are there advanced inscribers? There aren't. Very good. Uh, except of, are these accessible? Not until we have... All right, so we have to do a little bit of crafting with basic inscribers before we can make advanced ones. Um, but this is a standard inscriber recipe. That's good. Let's real quick just uh, gather up all the inscriber plates. So those come from the meteorites that we see out in the world sometimes. Uh... There doesn't appear to be one super close to our base. Quick detour to the end. I'm going to get a couple under pearls and then head to one of the end cities. Or at least to off the main island here. So if I could find that thing. Um, I want to get some chorus fruit. Because if we get some chorus fruit, we can get creative flight outside of our base. Right now our creative flight is basically limited to, you know, within a couple hundred blocks of our base. Which is a lot, but uh, you think I can make this throw? Am I going to regret this? But uh, it doesn't cover, like, you know, way out. Oh, I wasn't even close. Too low. I got it. But uh, it doesn't cover the area outside our base. Yeah. Um, For what I'm looking for 
uh, what I'm looking for, meteorites. I gave up on being good. Oh well. Um, now that we're here, we can gather some chorus. I think if I get the chorus flower, I can also grow it in a uh, in a bonsai pot, right? That makes it quite easy to get a lot more. Is that true? Or these? No, these are not bonsaiable. That's a bit of a shame. Just take the chorus plant, toss it into a mana pool. It does use a sizable chunk of mana, but I mean, our mana is fully automated, so who really cares? Uh, and it turns into these glowing chorus fruits. When you eat these, you can eat them even while full. Each one gives you a healthy chunk of lag, um, but they're supposed to just give you some creative flight. So, uh, there's no buff to tell me how long it lasts. Oh, it says in the upper right corner. So, right up here. Two minutes of flight per. Alright, cool. So we grab this and then we can fly around and look for the meteors. There is a meteorite compass that can find these, but I found that there's so many of them. Oh boy. It's on the surface that we can quite easily just go mining. Well, there we go. And we got two inscribers. There's four total. Let's see how many meteors it takes to find them all. Number two. And we got it. Two, me or two meters to get all four presses again. And that's the second time in a row I've done this, actually. Uh, pretty impressive. The basic inscriber is pretty annoying to use. It only has like a single buffer slot. So I'm just going to use it manually and hit it with a time in a bottle. Um, and then do some manual crafting. My goal is to make the advanced inscriber basically first thing. So I need, what, two flux units? Uh... Wow, what is this? So this is... Dang, this is a nested recipe, but that's not bad. Okay, so I need two logic, two engineering processors. I'm, so I need to make eight processors in the basic inscriber before we can move on. Apparently the inscriber can't be timed or bottled either. It's the same speed, both fully timed and bottled and not timed and bottled, which, uh, all right, fine. You win this round. Uh, I'm just going to make acceleration cards as well to deal with that. A quarter of a million processing steps later, we have our two Fluix Logic oh, there's one. Yeah, two Fluix Logic units, which makes one advanced inscriber. I don't think I'm going to fully automate our advanced inscriber because eventually we even obsolete that with lazy AE2. So there's really like three tiers of AE2 crafting in this pack. There's base AE2, followed by AE2 stuff, followed by lazy AE2. So uh, as we get lazier over time, we get better and better technology. Um, anyways, what that means, though, is that I think one advanced inscriber will do. For now, I'll just batch craft in it. Maybe later on we can set up, well, we'll, we'll let Applied Logistics use it on demand. But um, the advanced inscriber only accepts energy, only accepts AE energy. So it does have to be connected to an energy acceptor or... Uh, ME controller, but since we don't have an ME controller yet, obviously you have to use, you know, use what you've got. But the big thing about this is that we can batch crafted it. So drop that in and I mean technically we could have batch crafted in the basic inscriber too, with just uh like manually or with uh item conduits and stuff to move items in and out. But this has a full buffer stack, which makes it easier to automate. We can then just grab some item conduits and go you know input output it's not sided like the basic inscriber is so it will accept input into any slot from any um input into any slot from any side so insert like that and then take the products out like this and we should have printed silicon in there so if i want more silicon uh, Grab as however much I have, dump it all into here. This essence may as well turn it into actual silicon. Drop that all into there. And then that'll inscribe it all over time. And this inscriber, I believe, yeah, this inscriber does play nice with um I'm in a bottle. So that makes it even easier to batch automate or to batch craft with. Here really is the beauty of batch crafting. Look at this. So in this chest, I just 
on all the raw ingredients and the proportions aren't even correct i think there's extra silicon and maybe some extra red stuff i don't care i'm gonna bottle this thing and it's just uh oh why is it not pulling in new ingredients there we go it does a stack like almost instantly and then i guess it waits a little bit because the item conduit's sleeping um to fix that we need a faster item transport than the item conduit and i think the integrated dynamics uh item transport is just the best it has a downside of not being able to share block space but the upside of being you know it, it runs at the speed of light unlike item conduits the item exporter here when it's set to export i it's basically just set to its basic boat export all items always it has you know you can tell it how fast and uh off. but um by with default settings it tries to send items every tick so uh, i appear to have run out of redstone yeah, but i got plenty left so anyways this ends up with it running you know basically full up and in just a couple of seconds we have all of our printed things done so this should be enough uh not forever but to last a fair chunk into the applied logistics era at least to the point where we have uh lazy 82 to further automate this anyways with that i think i can make one more of these things nope not quite actually i want i need one so let's make four more of these time in a bottle is really the all-star today even fully time in a bottle this takes a second and a half two seconds of work that's at 32x i believe processing speed so these take yeah a minute each um by default so at 32x it's two seconds it might be actually 64x at full speed i don't know uh but i need four of these per so i need 16 total and with that done i think we're ready to start our me controllers finally um i'm gonna have to settle for four we do get a fifth one from the quest reward so we'll have one for the subnet and four for the main net and that's probably enough i mean each i mean four gives us access to what like 20 ish faces uh 20 ish faces i'm definitely I, i'm capable of going through 20 ish faces worth of channels but i think if we're not intentionally you know throwing channels away left right and center 20 faces worth of channels should be sufficient if not we can expand it a little bit later on but um yeah like i think that's a good starting point however we are out of time today so we'll be back next episode to actually set up the me system there's a comfortable number of things we stopped to craft to like the cables the terminals the buses etc etc but um between or next episode we should have time to craft those components and set up our me system so there we go five me controllers that's our achievement today i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope to see you in the next one take care bye bye